Howdy, Hexers! Oh, I'm so ready for another tech highlight. Um, so about a year ago, we brought to you an unboxing of the original Payunora beta unit from Timon Skerich, who uh, has released these through uh, Crowd Supply. You can find uh, all these links in the description below. There's the Payunora, um, our unboxing from last June, and even an interview with Timon where we asked him all kinds of stuff about like what's going on with this, Ooh. and he showed us like Basically heat just sink this, this, and the... things like the M.2 slot on the back, which is really cool actually. Um, enables you to connect all kinds of peripherals and gadgets. So sh in in brief, the Payunora is as it says. A tiny but mighty open source carrier board for the Raspberry Pi CM4 Compute Module 4. The thing that is not mentioned there is that it's in an Arduino form factor. So you can see here, I actually dug out the better unit from before, to which I have attached this Compute Module 4 uh, previously. And I, did, I managed to do something with this that made it stop booting. I'm not sure what exactly, but Timon has graciously offered to help troubleshoot with me. Um, but anyway, uh, that's okay, because now I have, um, you know, a while ago, you can hardly get these anymore, but uh, I picked up another Compute Module 4 to try that, and now I have the new version, uh, the production version of this board, which I'm going to open up now, and we can take a look at it, and I'll show you the kinds of things that I'm planning to connect up to it, and then I'm hoping to later on do a video of actually what it builds. But just so you get some inspiration... Yay! Oh, this is so exciting. This has been sitting uh, near my desk for a while now, and I keep looking for a time to uh, open it up, and that time is now. So, uh, the production unit, I believe, became available in December of 2021, last year. Oh, <laughs> hack the planet! Yeah, good stuff. Um, and I've also dug out some accessories that I'm planning on using with this. So let's get this open. Can I do this with my finger now? No! I always have to use a little knife. Okay. Hold up. Intel, do the job. <laughs> Remember those? Okay. Diodes Delight is the name of the company. And, oh, look at this. Instructions for safe use. Fantastic. The product shall only be connected to an external power supply rated at 5 volts DC and a maximum current of 3 amps, etc. So I'll be reading through all of this before I try and hook this up. There's some more stuff on the product page, which we'll go through too. Ooh, a holographic sticker from Dio's Delight. Beautiful. Some little rubber feet, as before. Some pink foam, keeping it all happy in the box. And our Payunora itself. So one thing that you might notice in the previous unboxing, sorry, my uh, camera focus is a little bit out of whack today. Hmm. Hmm. Nope, not gonna get that to focus. But there was a bodge wire running uh, along here, right up the middle of the board, which is no longer there. What we do have are some of the same cool features, including this camera connector that slides out here and uh, our M.2 slot here with a couple of different screw holes for attaching those. And uh, not only that, but Timon has now released an adapter so that you can use bigger uh, extensions with this. So let's take a look. <laughs> uh, he's published a bunch of updates on this crowd supply project so that you can read about what's new here since the last time we talked about it. But uh, one of the key features here is the Quick and Stemma QT compatible connectors, which is super cool. Makes it quick and easy to use I squared C sensors. I've in fact dug out one of those that I plan to use. Um, let's get this focus in the right place. Yes, beautiful. Okay. I'm trying to make this a little nicer for you folks. There we go. Um, so another thing that I've dug out on my desk is this quick uh, air quality sensor from SparkFun. And this comes with their little tiny quick connector. And as you'll see, there is a uh, connector right on the board for that. You can use a quick or Stemma QT connector for that. And Stemma QT is Adafruit's equivalent for the quick line. Um, so either of those will work together, which is wonderful. 
I would like to make a little air quality sensing platform. I think that'd be really cool. Um, with the camera connector, which is a regular size Raspberry Pi camera connector, I know that some of the Zeros have had smaller camera connectors on them. And this one is uh, regular camera compatible. So you can use it with the you know OG uh, Raspberry Pi cameras. I always forget which way these go in, but I'll check before I actually connect it up. Uh, or you can use some of the newer uh, high quality cameras from Raspberry Pi that they've been releasing over the last couple of years. You may, I think you can use this with a regular adapter, but I remember there being something weird about it. Is that the same? Hmm. Always check your adapters and connecting uh, ribbon cables. So another cool thing about this board is that uh, if you've worked with Raspberry Pi, you may be a little bit frustrated with the lack of labeling on the pins. I know I have. In fact, that was uh, a little bit of a complaint about actually the recent um, Raspberry Pi Pico W is that it has labels only on the bottom side. This one, no matter which way you hook it up, no matter which way it's facing, you'll always be able to read which pin is which because they're labeled on both sides. Isn't that beautiful? I think it's gorgeous. You've got the same USB-C connector, USB-A connector, and full-size HDMI port. Uh, and you can switch between USB host and device mode over here. So um, there's lots of interesting hacky things that Timon mentions on Crowd Supply about what you can do with this board, uh, which aren't necessarily fully supported, but uh, that you could try if you want, such as, for example, uh, hooking up a microcontroller here. If you wanted to make your own little hacky microcontroller extension and talk to it over USB serial, you could do that uh, with a slight modification that he describes on that page. Um, however, that is not necessarily something that will work out for you. Uh, and you got to be careful how you use the USB ports after that, because sometimes you can get collisions, and that's not good. Um, another cool thing that this has compared to regular Raspberry Pis is that it has built in an RGB LED and at least one user input button. And then also, I think it's still on here. <laughs> Yes, uh, I think this is, is that the off button? There's a little button that you can use to turn it off. Um, I think you might be able to reprogram that one. But uh, yeah, that means that you don't have to use a tutorial that I put together ages ago uh, about how to shut down and restart your Raspberry Pi with a single button press. I made a huge red button for it. Um, but because A, there were no buttons connected to that Raspberry Pi uh, from the beginning, and B, because there's no way to gracefully shut it down without going into the command line um, or you know the GUI and like selecting that option. It's really nice to have that built in directly to this device. Both of those options, uh, you have not only a user programmable button, but also um, a uh, an on off button, which is great. Then you've got an SD card, micro SD card connector. Uh, I think that it would be interesting to use these um, these storage options from MakerDisk. So Cytron is a company that we've reviewed a few of their products before, and I've linked those below. And they make both a 64 gig um, SD card that is approved for by Raspberry Pi for use with Raspberry Pi products. This is a 64 gigabyte micro SD card that they sent us for review a while back. I've never had a chance to test it out. Um, also, they actually make an M2 size uh, SSD that you can stick in your Payonora. How, you ask? Surely this is too small. Uh, it's going to stick out. And that is also addressed in the crowd supply page. So let's go take a look at that. Uh, more about the quick and semi QT options. There's a bunch of cool labeled um, diagrams. <laughs> Power and activity LED, button number one and two uh, can be reprogrammed. Yes, uh, RGB LED, bunch of good stuff about that. Um, optimize for hacking and integration. So yeah, the M2 connector uh, provides the perfect in interface for a more compact style of add-on board. If you're feeling hacky, you can use the optional, optional jumper pads to connect the USB host port directly to the M2 connector following the industry standard M.2 B key pinout. So here, there is a little RP2040 microcontroller connected directly onto uh, that slot, which is super cool. Um, I personally have worked with like 
talking to teensies or talking to Arduino nanos over cereal from uh, a Raspberry Pi. And it's kind of a pain to figure out how to mount them together. And you're always worried the wires are going to come unplugged unless you like solder them to the back of the board. This solves that problem or hot glue. Hot glue is not, not a good option for that. But you know, those are, your options are limited and now you have a better option. Um, more features and specs. There's lots of Python compatibility, circuit Python compatibility. Uh, you can do all kinds of stuff uh, with existing tutorials from Adafruit and others. Um, there are two different versions of this board. There's the Pro and the Lite. So this is the Pro. It has the uh, M2 connector and your camera connector on the bottom. The Lite version does not have those, so it is thinner. It's flat on the bottom. Um, that gives you a, a couple of extra millimeters to play with if you really um, pressed for space. You can see a comparison here between the Pionora Raspberry Pi 4, the Pi Compute Module 4 I.O. board, and the Pi Zero W. Um, it is less power hungry than the Pi 4, and you know there's all these different trade-offs that you can make. I think that this is probably a good one. Uh, I worked with Pi 4s, and they are so power hungry. I'm hoping that there's some stuff that I can do with this one that I was not able to do on the force, particularly for portable companion robots, which are wearable robots that I make. So um, yeah, lugging around enough to power a full Pi 4 is a bit of a challenge. Um, FAQs, which SSDs will work with Pionora? Um, he goes into which M2 form factors will work with this. So for example, this one uh, is size 2280 that I just showed you. And actually I should check whether it's, uh... yeah. I'm gonna like triple check all the compatibilities before I hook up everything up, just because I managed to bork my board last time. I don't wanna do that again. Uh, but um, also you can power Pionor from the pen headers, which is nice. I've done this for a Raspberry Pi before and he has some tips on doing it for the Pionora. Very cool. Um, there's hardware limitations of the compute module four that you'll want to check out. This is what I'm talking about with wanting to check through everything, uh, three times before I hook it up, because there's a few, it's very versatile and there's a lot of options, but also you have to make sure that you're not doing something that is going to bork it by accident. Mm -mm. If you're confused by the USB setup, you're not alone. <laughs> you can find more info on that. So besides that, um, I've also got links to the docs here, very comprehensive, beautiful documentation, um, all kinds of stuff, getting to Blinky with Blinka, with Python. Um, and there's some, um, oop, a getting started. There's a an example release image. It's all set up for the CM4 on Pionora. You can follow them on Twitter. <laughs> uh, you can find our interview with Timon and uh, the previous unboxing of the beta version, which does include that bodge wire hmm, somewhere along here. We have come a long way in a year. And uh, that Raspberry Pi shutdown and reset button is also in the uh, description below this video. You can find our unboxing of the Cytron tools that I mentioned with this storage. Also the air quality sensor that I'm using here. This one has an updated version. That's very exciting. Ooh, look at that. Oh, I'm gonna be so, I'm gonna be so informed about the air quality in my neighborhood. It's incredibly exciting. Um, we talked about storage, cameras, sensors. Yeah, anything that you can get on a stem QT or quick connector is gonna be compatible with this. Um, then also there's links for where you can find information on buying Raspberry Pi high quality camera and the other Raspberry Pi camera options, including the no IR camera board. Yeah, check out those links. Uh, go get yourself a Pionora. You can get the light version. You can get the pro version. You can also get all these accessories. So this is the uh, extender, the BK version uh, 2280 extender. So that will easily handle uh, the size of this uh, SSD, if it is in fact the proper type, which I'll have to check. Um, you can get a heatsink. You can get a micro SD card that is uh, approved for use. 
<laughs> and you can get a little Wi-Fi antenna kit for your CM4 so that you can easily connect it reliably up to the internet, which is important because this does not have ethernet. It's not thick enough to have ethernet. It doesn't have the surface area for ethernet. What it does have is this incredibly cool sort of superpower, which is the ability to use some, not all, but some Arduino shields with the Raspberry Pi. This is something that uh, really got me excited about the Pi Unora in the first place, because a lot of us have a bunch of Arduino shields. And um, even if you're used to working with Raspberry Pi as well, there's, you know, between the two ecosystems, there aren't always uh, all the options across both. You sometimes have to choose um, what functionalities you want for which platform. And this sort of acts as a bit of a bridge. And if you have uh, Arduino shields that are going to be compatible with the Raspberry Pi in this form factor, then you're uh, able to save yourself from buying another device and uh, get a little bit more versatility out of the hardware that you already own, which I think is super cool. And it makes it extra friendly for people who are used to working with microcontrollers already. Maybe you've worked with microcontrollers uh, with CircuitPython before, and now you want to get into Raspberry Pi, and this is this can be your gateway. It's so cool. Anyway, this is the Pi Unora Pro version, uh, production version, uh, both of those. The light version, again, does not have the extra ports on the bottom. Uh, very excited to try this out. I hope that I don't bork this one, and I'll actually get to post a full tutorial, and I'll share my findings on what exactly uh, is compatible with this, because I'm hoping that all three of these things, uh, this micro SD card from Cytron, the MakerDisk brand, uh, MakerDisk SSD, 240 gigs. Imagine having that, like, for data logging, for cameras. Like, you could make it. I could easily make a little camera out of this guy, and uh, any kind of maybe even some Arduino add-ons that I have accessible, plus have um, quick sensors and stuff included. So many options and possibilities. I just gotta make sure that it all works together. So, uh... oh, this is a good point. Gotta make sure uh, what type of uh, drive connection we've got going on here as well. That's what I mean. I'm gonna read through all the documentation before I actually hook it up. Thank you for pointing that out. Oh, it's over. Hey, you're uh, over is the creator uh, or the founder of Cytron and the creator of this technology that I'm holding in my hand right now. Thanks for sending these over, by the way. <laughs> so yeah, I will make sure that it is compatible so I don't wreck either this or this. Um, cool. Yeah. Once again, as Timon says, hack the planet, an evergreen quotation from the movie Hackers. We'll see you soon. Um, and as always, hack on. Thanks for joining. <laughs>